right. Uh, hello, everyone. Um, hi. <laughs> I'm Aditi, the head of design at Referral Candy. Uh, not sure how many people have heard of Referral Candy. We're a small startup based in Singapore. So uh, today I'm going to talk about uh, designing for automated conversations, uh, PS. It's not AI, uh, so more on that later. <laughs> um, so we have two products. Uh, we are working currently on two products, Referral Candy and Candy Bar. Uh, and we have actually built out automated conversations or bots for both our products. So I'm going to talk about a bit about, uh, I guess, stories, things that we've learned. Um, but before I start talking about the actual bots and the actual conversations, uh, let me explain a bit about uh, what we do. So uh, Referral Candy is an automated referral program for small and medium businesses, uh, so online stores. And how it works is you install Referral Candy on an online store, and then um, it automates your referral program. And it works with any online store. We have a wide range of merchants using us, so they could be selling clothes, shoes, uh, you know, food, tea, coffee, really anything at all, uh, and it works. Um, so it's already automated, but we thought, uh, you know, and this product has been sort of live for five years. Uh, we are doing quite well, and we thought, can uh, something like a messenger bot really make automation better? So it was more like an experiment uh, when we tried it out. So these are a few images of uh, our referral assistant. So you can have a look there, uh, pretty straightforward. It's, uh, I mean, our hope when we built it was, you know, we hope this uh, will be a better experience for people rather than the sort of regular automation. Uh, we hope that, uh, you know, it's more personal, it's a more personal experience, it's easier for people to, you know, get their referral code, share it with their friends, uh, stuff like that. Um, we have another product too. Uh, it's called Candy Bar, and this is for offline merchants. So Referral Candy is for online merchants in stores, and Candy Bar is for offline uh, brick-and-mortar merchants. Um, and this is actually how we got into trying out these experiments and trying out these automated conversations, because Referral Candy is, you know, five years doing really well, and Candy Bar is super new. We recently launched it. And so it was easier for us as a team to try something this new uh, with Candy Bar. Um, it's used by many, many kinds of small and medium businesses like donut shops, cafes, hair salons, uh, all over. So we have US merchants, we have merchants in Singapore, uh, we have merchants in the Philippines uh, using us. Uh, this is Joel. Uh, he's, uh, from Mission Juice, and he's in Singapore, and he uses Candy Bar. So th I think it's important at this point to talk about how much our team actually cares about people like Joel. Um, we really want to make a better experience for people like Joel. And um, that's why we started out trying and experimenting uh, with automated conversations. Okay. This is an image of... Uh, the candy bar assistant. So this is the first assistant that we built out. Uh, pretty straightforward, candy bar is an automated rewards program for brick and mortar merchants. And um, what you get is you get notified about, you know, when, when's your next reward, how many points do you have, how many stamps do you have, and stuff like that. So straightforward notifications. But we also built out a feedback feature where we asked people, how was your visit? So after you visit a cafe, we would ask them, uh, you know, was your visit good, was it bad, and we tried to collect feedback. Uh, so this was interesting, and this was sort of our first step into this whole uh, field. So why automated conversations? I think it's good to question, um, you know, I think Prakriti also mentioned that in her talk, that you shouldn't just do this stuff for the sake of it. Um, you know, why are you actually doing this stuff? So of course, uh, you know, we want to improve the customer experience. Our products are both merchant-facing and customer facing. So the merchants see the dashboards and the customer uses the rewards program or uses the referral program, right? Um, so yeah, it all started with an experiment and it started with the SMS. So um, when we first started building out 
candy bar. We had a pretty straightforward SMS. Uh, here's an, a very real example of our SMS. And a lot of my examples are all real. Uh, so um, very straightforward. As you can see, it's an SMS that is sent to a customer when they join the rewards program saying, hey, here's your stamp. Here's your reward. Um, please tap on this link. So initially, I was quite obsessed with trying to fix this SMS. Uh, I made it shorter. I tried to make the links neater. I tried to rewrite it uh, many, many times. Um, we did a lot of testing with the SMS too. Uh, we found out that you know people really like the unsub link, so we kept it in. Um, so we did a lot of testing, but um, there are a lot of limitations with SMS. And it was an MVB product, so we let it go initially. Um, I started looking at examples from my everyday life. So these are all real examples from my everyday life in Singapore. Body Shop sending me these horrible messages. I'm actually in their loyalty program and I do use it. Um, but as you can see from this SMS, it's just like characters and it's not really readable. It's a mess. Um, and then of course I get spam from some random number. And uh, the Redmart delivery notification is not bad, you know, pretty straightforward. Here's your delivery. Um, Apple's SMS, also not so bad. Uh, that was actually about the time I got my Apple Watch. So I was really excited. And uh, it said, Apple Store, today is the day. <laughs> so I was like, oh, that's really nice writing. And maybe we should, you know, get a writer to help us uh, improve our SMS. Um, at the same time, I think when you look at this screen, you realize that uh, all of these SMSs sort of look the same from a distance. And there's a limit to how much you can improve your customer's experience with just SMS. So we looked at alternatives to SMS. Um, I started looking at, in my own life, what are the alternatives to SMS that I'm exposed to? So one really nice example uh, from Ninja Van. Um, again, a delivery notification, uh, but so much better than an SMS. And I was like, thank you. You know, there are other uh, teams experimenting with this and really trying to break out of the uh, SMS situation. Netflix also texts me, which is a bit weird, but um, once a month. Uh, it's not a very useful <laughs> uh, notification, but it's only once a month, so I don't mind, to be very honest. Uh, so yeah, so Netflix also texts me. And um, I guess what I realized was when you are looking at alternatives to SMS, uh, you're pretty limited. This is the range. Um, the formats are limited, but let's work with what we have. Let's stick to the goal, and let's try to uh, build a better conversation with our customers and make it more engaging. So that was a pretty sort of uh, starting point for our experiment with Candy Bar. So yeah, why did we first build Candy Bar Assistant before we built Referral Candy Assistant? It's because Candy Bar was a newer product. Uh, it was easier for the team to experiment with Candy Bar, Referral Candy, five-year-old product. Uh, you know, most of our revenue comes from there, and so we wanted to be more, more careful with Referral Candy. So um, after building these two assistants, uh, I think the team and uh, me personally, I think we learned a lot of things. And so I'm going to share a few things that we learned. Hopefully, some of this is going to be helpful uh, for all of you. Uh, it would be interesting to hear. Number one uh, takeaway that I had uh, from working on Candy Bar Assistant especially was don't make it look like a human. Now this. Uh, sounds a bit counterintuitive, but hear me out. I think um, what's happened is we are surrounded by automation already. And um, this is, I think, uh, what I'm trying to say. Samantha is not a real person. This photo is from unsplash.com and is a free commercial uh, image. Okay, This is not real. Don't make your bot be Samantha. Be truthful and honest about what you have built. It's an automation, it's a machine, call it that. And so call it Candy Bar Assistant. Use an image that is truthful, please. I think as designers, we should be a little bit more responsible here, and we should make sure that we are saying the right things. And the reason for this uh, you know, is that trust is very fragile in an automated conversation. 
and so it's very easy to lose it. It's very easy to figure out that this thing is a bot. So don't even try to act like you're human. Forget about it. Okay. This is an example. Again, this is a real example uh, from Referral Candy. So we have a 15-person customer support team. Uh, they're all amazing, and they talk to our merchants using Intercom. Okay. Now this is an intercom conversation between a real human merchant and a real human customer support person. Okay? Now this merchant has become very frustrated because a lot of Shopify merchants, this person is very successful, uh, use a lot of SaaS services. A lot of SaaS services use a lot of bots. And so this person says, I feel like I've been in a chatbot all last week and this week trying to fix one issue. So you can sort of hear the frustration uh, already in this chat conversation. Okay? Unfortunately, Tippy, who is, by the way, an amazing, amazing guy, has to say, I'm a real person. So no need to worry. Okay? So this is already happening, folks. People are confused about whether the person they are talking to is a bot or a real person. You know, half the time, you're not really paying attention when you're chatting with some service person. And so it's really, and this sort of underlines this point that I'm making, which is please don't make it uh, act like a human. And so the conversation ends with uh, Tippy sending a link to our referral candy about page with where his photo is there. And it's very clear that he's part of our team. Okay? And so uh, really think about the impact that you're having on the ecosystem. Uh, you know, we don't do this, but uh, a lot of other services do. And so as designers, try to pay attention uh, to what's happening. This is a, a mistake that we made, which I like to show, <laughs> show people. So um, we send this automated message. It's not a bot, um, but Intercom allows you to send automated messages uh, to people. And um, the photo here, which I've hidden with a smiley face, is somebody from our team and it's a real person. So you can make it seem like a message is sent by a real person, but this is not real, it's automated. So what happens is when this person does a specific task, like an event is triggered, we send this message. So it seems really personal, because only this person is getting it at that particular time when you did that task. So this merchant thought it was real and thought it was a real time chat. And, it's, and so I said, so in the automated message, it said, welcome to your free trial of Candy Bar. Have you tried your first stamp yet? And the person says, hey, sorry, that was rude of me. No, I haven't. <laughs> so I was shocked. I was like, oh my god, people are so nice. And also, uh, I felt so bad because this person is feeling guilty that they didn't do it. So from a quantitative point of view, this is an excellent message. This message does really well. And uh, you know, right after this, we can see on full story that this person actually goes and does their first step of onboarding, which is trying your first app. So it's a, it's, a, it's a success. But in the long term, it's not a success, right? We need to make sure that it's clear that this was not a real conversation. This was not a customer support person, because we have real customer support people too. So we have to differentiate that this is not real, it's an automation, it's just a reminder and a nudge saying, hey, try your first onboarding task and the real customer support is different, right? So yeah, trust is fragile in an automated conversation. Be honest, transparent, that it's just a bot and it's limited, okay? Um, this is not necessarily a bad thing, it's okay. It's just accept that and design accordingly. The other big takeaway uh, for me was uh, design basics are the same, uh, but tools are different. So uh, your design basics are basically the same, you know, iterate of product design, have clear goals, test, design, iterate. In the center of your circle, you have, you know, your user data, your content call, user data coming in, and you're sort of testing a lot and all of that. So your basics are pretty much the same, okay? Um, this is a, a, a picture of uh, one of the first rounds of testing we did uh, for Candy Bar Assistant uh, with real people. And um, it was very important because we were building out the feedback feature. And um, when you ask for feedback, it's a very sort of delicate point. Um, the tone of voice has to be correct. 
the timing has to be correct. And so uh, we did a lot of testing for that. So here you can see um, how our feedback feature actually looks. And, um, but the tools are different. So initially, I sort of went the same way. I tried to do wireframes. So these are my uh, wireframes initially when I was trying to design the candy bot. I designed them in Sketch, and I uploaded them to Zeppelin. But it was a big fail, and it doesn't really work to talk to your team about an automated conversation through wireframes. Obviously, it doesn't work. Um, and then I downloaded the sketch files from Facebook. Um, Facebook gives you lots of you know, little uh, UI elements. They look really nice. So I use them. And uh, when you're creating Facebook Messenger bot, um, these, uh, these are some of the UI elements. So you have you know, quick replies, like these three bubbles, um, and stuff like that. So I started making some really nice looking mockups. And I said, oh, you know, this is what we're working on. But again, this doesn't really work to talk about an automated conversation with your team. They can't really give you feedback on this. It's just like, what? Um, so yeah, I actually fell back to this uh, conversation tree, especially when I was pairing with senior engineers. And they wanted to know the logic of it. And so we just drew it out like this. And we were iterating very, very fast. So every two days, we were changing it um, as we tried to work towards the MVP. So when you're iterating really fast, uh, you can't make uh, really you know, beautiful looking mockups. You have to sort of just uh, stick to the flow, understand what is the MVP that you are really building. How do you MVP an automated conversation is something I'm trying to share here. The other thing that you have to do is uh, write your MVP script. Um, so that's, I mean, at least that's my recommendation. So think of the script like a movie script. So this is an example from Indiana Jones, I think, yeah. And um, think of it as a movie script, you know, with characters, actions, scenes, uh, stage changes, and stuff like that. And uh, this is an example of the candy bar assistant script um, that I wrote for one of the flows. So what it helps you do is it helps you go through each and every flow, each and every persona, and to check for whether this actually makes sense. Uh, okay, So you can't only look at it like this. Um, especially from a design point of view, it's very easy to end up writing something uh, that sounds weird. Uh, so use a script. And use a script at least to get to the MVP phase where you need to define what is your MVP script. Once you have your you know, conversation tree and your MVP script, um, then you can sort of start visualizing your little story elements. Uh, so for example, uh, that's like uh, one of our elements for how the, the bot says hello. Um, we have sort of four versions of uh, what we say when somebody gives feedback. So if somebody gives uh, you know, bad feedback, we, you know, uh, the bot mimics empathy. And it says, oh, I'm so sorry about that. Do you want to tell me more about it? So we don't force the person to give us more feedback, um, but we give them the option. Uh, do you want to add more? Um, so that's how you sort of end up having your story elements. Um, and it sort of helps at this point as you build on top of your MVP. The other thing I recommend once you have your MVP script, your conversation tree, um, and all of this in place is prototype it, um, obviously. Um, so we actually built the prototype afterwards because it went live pretty fast. So after it went live, I ended up making a prototype. Um, I've tried a few, and I like Bot Society, but feel free to explore. Um, this was pretty easy to use and simple. Um, you can share a clickable prototype with the team, with the customer support team, uh, you know, with the product team and business, to, so that they understand what exactly it is uh, that you're doing. So yeah, uh, design basics are the same, uh, but the tools are different. Okay? And write your MVP script. And of course, test a lot. Testing is just basics, but uh, it helps to say it again. Uh, the next big takeaway <laughs> is become a really good writer or uh, get a really good writer. So I think becoming a really good writer is very difficult. So if you can't do that, uh, then get a really good writer. Um, and I can't underline this enough because a lot of people think of uh, these automated conversations at a very functional level. 
But the thing is, even at the functional level, the tone of voice is crucial for success. So um, it's not about what you say, it's about how you say it. So make sure you really put in those hours and that time in crafting the right words. Um, and something about cultural details. So we have uh, some US merchants using uh, Candy Bar Assistant and I thought, oh, uh, you know, we had a bit of a brainstorming session in the office and we were like, how should we say hello? So everybody was like, oh, cute, you know, Jimmy Fallon Jeff would be nice. And then we had people replying saying, I hate Jimmy Kimmel. It's, it's not Jimmy Kimmel, it's Jimmy Fallon. And you would be surprised how many people hate Jimmy Fallon. It's, I was surprised. I was like, oh my god. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Yeah, so yeah, cultural details um, is easily missable and connected to, you know, getting a good writer. The words you use, the details are important in your MVP, especially in a script, right? So please pay attention to this. Uh, after we got several complaints, we actually replaced it with a more generic uh, hi. <laughs> so, uh, and by the way, no complaints after this. It has just been all good. Um, so yeah, so just be careful about the cultural details here. The nuances are important when it comes to text only and chat. You know, people react in a surprising manners. And then uh, the next big takeaway is uh, it's OK to say sorry. It's OK to say, I don't know. Your bot isn't smart. It's eventually going to lead to a situation where it doesn't know anything. So um, this is what we do in Candy Bar Assistant, but feel free to get creative. So uh, the person is actually asking a very relevant question. How many points do I have? And that's literally what Candy Bar does. It tells you <laughs> how many points you have, how many stamps you have, uh, you know, how far you are from the next reward. That's all. But it doesn't understand, right? Um, and so you have to apologize at this point, and that's OK. Don't try to write a vague thing that maybe I understood. No, just be very clear. It's a failure point, And uh, people figure out pretty quickly. So we did a lot of testing. And if things don't work, people find the right action pretty quickly. So here you can see this person has immediately tapped on view rewards to find out uh, you know, how many points they have. So people can navigate um, around this, this sort of UI pretty easily. Um, last point, uh, and not the least, is it's not AI. So this is the uh, bit from my talk title. Um, and it doesn't have to be AI. I think um, a lot of people feel like if you're doing an automated conversation, it has to be smart. It has to somehow understand uh, you know, everything that the person is saying. But it doesn't have to. I think as long as your basics are good, as long as you're building this automation for good reasons, you can still create a really good experience for your customers. You can still make something that's enjoyable, that's nice, and still works, and you can still hit your metrics. Okay, So you can still do all of that uh, with something that is you know, a dumb bot. Um, I think it sort of reminds me of uh, this sort of command line interface from when I was a kid. Um, you know, that you use to load up games. It's just a basic Q&A format. You type in a query, and the system does a thing. If you type in the wrong query, it's an absolute horrible failure, right? Um, and so that is basically what a lot of this automation is. You're just making it nicer, more human, more friendly, with emojis and GIFs and stuff like that. But it is limited, and that's OK. Um, so when I started on this uh, automated conversation design, I was pretty much in this phase where I, said, where I literally uh, asked the internet, how do you design an automated conversation? And then I got a bunch of you know, links, and I read Medium articles. So I hope that uh, after this talk, you have a little bit more knowledge, um, at least from what we faced. Um, from designing these two diff very different um, bots. So quick summary. Uh, number one, don't make it look like a human. Uh, be very clear who is a human and who is not a human so that both can work together in a, in a happy collaboration. Um, 
Trust is fragile in an automated conversation, so be as honest and truthful as possible of what limitations uh, your bot has. Your design basics are the same. So, you know, make sure your goals are very clear, make sure stakeholder alignment is there, make sure your qual and quant metrics are balanced, um, make sure you're testing a lot and all of that sort of basic stuff. Um, but your tools are different, right, when you're designing um, an automated conversation. Write your MVP script and test it as much as possible and uh, try as hard as possible to get a very, very, very good writer. It's okay to say sorry and I don't know. And uh, last but not least, it's not AI. It doesn't have to be AI. You can make a really great experience using something like this as a standalone product, as an addition to uh, your already existing product. It just depends uh, what you want to use it for. Um, that's it from me. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Aditi. Can we Questions? get a slide up? We're just going to bring up a slido. Sorry. Can we take questions on the floor? Uh, we're just struggling a bit with our slido. Questions? No, <laughs> no one has tried to do that. But they do ask a lot of questions. Um, some people ask about the weather. Uh, some people ask for the menu, which is more relevant. Yeah. <laughs> Not yet, but it's definitely in the plans. For now, we are very focused <laughs> on getting it to work really well. Uh, one of the challenges we are facing is a timeout um, because the conversation should time out. Um, that's what people expect, but the system remembers. Um, and so then there's, it leads to weird. There's just lots of stuff to solve before we get to the jokes. <laughs> so. All right, so we have one question which says, how does your team measure success with this feature and did you meet your goals? Good question. Um, so we uh, have uh, metrics, uh, product metrics uh, for each thing that we built. Um, so initially, we measured success with the initial first experiment to see whether it performed better than an SMS. Pretty simple first step. And then when it did perform better than an SMS, then we could come up with a new goal. Um, you know, can it do other things? Um, so initial experiment, and then you have your MVP, then you have a different goal for your MVP, and then you keep building on top of that. Um, obviously, keep your metrics user-centric. Um, so for example, in Referral Candy, our business and user metric is referral revenue. The more revenue our merchants make, it's a win for us, it's a win for our merchants, um, and it's a win for the customers too. So, because they are getting rewards, right? So come up with the right metric which is aligned across, and then it's easy after that. How long did your testing phase for Candy Bar really take? Any tips on how to convince clients that want implementations ASAP? Clients, um, okay. So testing never ends. Uh, whose question is this? Uh, okay, hi. Uh, so uh, testing never really ends. We didn't have a testing phase. We just constantly testing. So how we do testing is we are a really small team. We are four designers, right, um, and about 10 engineers. So um, how testing usually works is I want to test something tomorrow, so I send out the word that, you know, come into the office and we'll give you $50 Amazon gift voucher. And people come. It's fine. I would <laughs> so definitely come for that. It's not. It's yeah, yeah. Do you want to <laughs> participate in usability testing? We are always doing it. So um, something that I personally believe, um, and thankfully uh, I've been able to do it with the support of the founders, is uh, constant research and constant testing. So uh, if you have a phase, a testing phase, then the whole conversation comes up of 
should we have a testing phase? No. Don't even let it get to that point. Just be testing constantly. You just need five people anyway uh, for a basic testing. So keep doing it constantly. Uh, so whenever you do need to update, there's already so much that you already know. Um, do you use, sure. uh, sorry, does that answer your question? Okay. Awesome. Do you use A-B test to test your automation, automatic messages in production environment? Not yet, but it would be nice if we could do that. Um, there are a lot of mi um, limitations uh, with Facebook and Facebook Messenger and the way it works. Um, so it's just more complex, but definitely it would be a good, good thing to try out. Uh, how do you avoid, avoid users' frustration? Oh, sorry, where did it miss? How do you avoid users' frustration? Uh, I've been talking about talking to a bot, but at the same time, make your bot limited to take care of your customers' trust. Wow, um, that's a tough question. I think if people are frustrated with your bot and they say, oh, I've been talking to a bot, that is not a good sign and you should probably switch off your bot for some time um, and think about it. <laughs> are you sure that you've built the right thing? Because we've had our bot up for a very long time and we haven't had that yet. Um, also, I think uh, one thing is when it comes to the limitations, at some point a human has to step in if somebody is having a really bad experience and so uh, luckily we've had you know an amazing customer support team our customer support team they do a lot of chat support so they're really familiar with how to say things the right way uh, how to say a welcome message without it being annoying and fake um, so really learn I think from your customer support team and sort of absorb that and try to put that uh, into your bot and then I would just say ask the customer support team if you're having this sort of issue so we have one question from Menika who's saying, did you build a tone of voice system, like a design system to keep your messages consistent? Um, I'm not sure what a tone of voice system is. <laughs> uh, but definitely we, oh, okay. Uh, whose question is this? It's very difficult. Um, um, sorry, uh, actually what I meant is like you have a design system to keep design elements consistent. Do you have any system like a brand tone of voice that you follow to keep your chatbot messages consistent? It would be nice, um, okay. but no, I don't think we do. Uh, I think we should have one. Uh, we did, uh, what, what I did initially when we first started the experiment was I did a branding workshop with the marketing team. Uh, there are some really good writers on that team and very good content people. So we got them to input, you know, how should the bot say hi, how should it, of course that led to the Jimmy Fallon gif, but um, I think in terms of branding, sure, we did that. Um, there was a lot of clarity also in terms of what we don't want to do. Um, we wanted it to be very uh, sort of designed for the metric that we were working towards. So all of the decoration was later. Um, I'm not sure if I answered your question, but we don't have a formal system, but there is, in a small team, it's easier to have an under a shared understanding of uh, what is okay and what is agreed. Um, in terms of our brand, there's a lot of sweet, uh, you know, because it's candy, candy bar. So <laughs> uh, there's some few to uh, like words and things that we can use more often than others. But it can also get annoying, so you just have to be very careful. I think these are all the questions. I did notice during your talk, a lot of dog lovers went like, ooh, so cute. Are, it, are there any cat lovers in there who have any questions? Why no cats? No? Okay. <laughs> all right, awesome. Thank you so much, Aditi. Thank you so right, much for coming you. in today.